If you're starting out 3D rendering, you're probably confused and you have a lot of questions. What software to use? What computer do I need? Where do I get clients? And how much should I charge them? Make sure to stay around all the way through this video because I will answer every single one of those questions. Before getting started with 3D rendering software, you first should decide on what 3D modeling software you will be using. The 3D modeling software will basically be the input for your 3D rendering engine to actually create the geometry and the materials that will be used throughout the whole process. A few of the most popular choices in the industry are ARCHICAD, Revit, SketchUp, and 3ds Max. Revit and ARCHICAD are BIM software, which are very useful if you want to create floor plans, documentation, as well as 3D models all in one place. This is very useful to at least have a basic knowledge of it, because most of the time you will receive files in this format from your clients. The other group of these software are more dedicated to only 3D work. However, 3ds Max can sometimes be too intimidating for beginners, and that's why I most of the time suggest to get started with SketchUp. SketchUp is very easy to use, it is very affordable and it won't take too much power away from your computer and this will obviously ease off the costs and the expenses for starting out as a 3D artist. SketchUp is also compatible with a lot of 3D rendering software which is what we'll cover next. So when it comes to 3D rendering software there are two main groups CPU rendering software and GPU rendering software. These groups are divided by their processing power source, which is very self-explanatory, meaning that the CPU rendering software get their power from the processor of the computer and the GPU rendering software get their power from the graphics card. Let's first get started with the CPU rendering software. So the two most popular ones are V-Ray and Corona Render. Now, to be honest, most of the time, whenever I see a highly realistic rendering online, it is probably done with these two software. But once again, they can be too intimidating for beginners so most of the time they are not the right match for you to get started with they have way too many settings that can feel too overwhelming but obviously that comes with the price of having a very high quality output the other thing is that cpu rendering can take a lot more time than gpu rendering which also makes it a lot harder for the beginners this is for the reason being that beginners will obviously make a lot more mistakes and this will require them to redo renders and start the rendering process once again and this will take way too much time which will also postpone the amount of time that you will get feedback from and critiques on your render so most of the time you're just going to be improving a little bit with slower steps rather than with gpu rendering which is what we're going to talk about next now the three main gpu rendering software out there are enscape Lumion and twin motion now before i get started on talking about each of the software i want to make it clear that you can create realistic renders and very good visuals with all five of the software that I'm mentioning. It all depends on how good you get with your skill set. These software are a lot faster than CPU rendering software. They take less time to learn and they are easier to use. Yes, you will have to sacrifice the quality a little bit, but major firms like Foster and Partners big and many more use Enscape to actually create their visualization so if Enscape fulfills all their needs who are we to complain about the software i myself use Enscape over all of the other software that i mentioned and it comes down to one main reason and that is speed Enscape is a lot faster than any other rendering software and at least for me, it has the best time to quality ratio that any software can provide. In the industry, one of the many competitive edges that Enscape offers me is the amount of time that I'm able to deliver the service to the client. Not only that, but if you're a beginner, the user interface is super simple and it's just very intuitive. So as of now, we have the two required software to create realistic rendering and to get started with. So SketchUp for modeling and Enscape for 3D rendering. If you actually want to take an extra step to make your render look even better, I would recommend to actually get to learn Photoshop. Photoshop isn't 100% a requirement, but it can definitely have a major impact on how your renders look. Sometimes it can complete tasks in just a few minutes, which otherwise would have taken hours in SketchUp and other modeling software. Not only that, but the new AI that Photoshop has implemented is just insane and can get you some results in a pretty quick time frame. So make sure you're keeping up with the latest updates to actually make your workflow a lot faster and your life just overall simpler. So as a conclusion for the software, if you ask me the perfect combo to get started with is SketchUp, Enscape and Photoshop. So keep that in mind when choosing the tools 
for your service. Now, to run the software, you would need a specific laptop or PC. Let's take a look at the requirements that the software have. I know that if you're an architecture student, it will make more sense to you to actually get a laptop since it's portable and you can get it from university to home to office or whatever. So that's one aspect on why you would choose a laptop. But if you ask me more times than not, I would choose to build a PC. The reason being is that you get more value for the cost of it. You can change the parts later on meaning you have to invest less money to actually improve the compatibility of your hardware and within the same budget you can get a higher quality pc rather than a laptop the type of computer that you want to have depends highly on the software that you're going to choose i am assuming that you're going with a recommendation that i did earlier in the software so i will include three computer builds in the description below with three different budgets. One of them is under $800, the other one is under $1,500, and the last one is under $2,500. Obviously, if you want to go higher than that with a budget, feel free to do so, but I myself don't see the actual improvement for the cost that it actually takes to upgrade your computer at that level. Other than that, I would highly recommend that you actually have two monitors if possible and if your budget allows to. This for me has had a major impact on how efficient my workflow was. On one screen, I would always set up my SketchUp window and on the other one, I would set up my Enscape window, meaning that all the changes that I would do in my modeling, I would be able to immediately see them on my right monitor right here. You can find all of the gear that I use in my setup in the link in the description if you want to find that easier. Now, let's say that you have gotten confident with your skills, you have built your computer, you have learned the software. Now it's time to actually get the clients and start having an income from the skills that you learned. Now, just before I get into this, if you don't actually have decent skills, no matter how hard you try to apply the techniques that I'm going to show now, you're just not going to get clients. So to master your rendering skills in just just 14 days, make sure to click the first link in the description. Now to get clients, there is just one thing that you need to know. And that is knowing why your clients want to use 3D renders in the first place. Now, for my experience, that can be one of three things. Either they want to communicate their ideas to their clients, or they want to use the renders for marketing purposes, or one of them, which is a little bit more rare, is to actually pitch their ideas to potential investors. But all of these three reasons have one deep desire underneath them, and that is to actually get more revenue for their business. I really want you to pay close attention to these desires. If you're able to solve at least one of them, you're going to end up with a pocket full of money. At the end of the day, every business is just about solving other people's problems. So let's say you found the way to actually solve their problems. How do you let the people from the architecture industry or the real estate industry know that you actually exist and you can actually solve their problems? From my experience, there are three main ways you can market your 3D rendering skills in today's day and age. One of them is organic, which is with inbound leads and which means that the clients will reach out to you. So basically it is like posting your work online and the clients reach out to you themselves. And yes, it does sound easier than it actually is because for this you will need a very strategic content creation plan and it will take a lot longer than these other techniques because you will have to create a brand and you will have to create trust between you and the potential customers as well as you will have to use very creative ways to actually get their attention. Not only that, but you will have to be very consistent because the more often you put yourself out there with value and with quality, the higher your chances are to actually get exposure. The second option is to cold email, DMs, or even cold calling. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. You would have to create a marketing strategy where you reach out to the client rather than them reaching out to you. This does require a little bit more effort and maybe some investment in some of emailing software and all that, but you can easily do it manually if you have time, especially considering that you're in a starting phase in the position that you're at. Now, this is all about volume because the more you actually send these DMs, these emails or do cold calls, the higher the chances are you actually landing the client. But that is not all because you also have to look at quality and also precisely customizing and personalizing your outreach to the potential clients. Now, I'm just putting this in simple terms. That way I don't spend too much time because this is a very broad topic but you're just introduced to it. So if you want to learn more about this, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Now, the third technique is to pay traffic or ads. Now, I myself would suggest you to either use Facebook ads or TikTok ads. 
Now, this is very useful because the industry is very visual and Facebook and TikTok are very visual platforms. And through these platforms, you will be able to gather the attention from your potential customers if you're able to test things out properly as well as have a starting budget. As I said, every single one of these three methods has a very detailed way that you should approach it. So make sure to let me know if you'd want me to cover these topics a little bit more in detail in future videos. Now, a lot of people ask me about other platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, and all that stuff. Now, I myself started out there back in 2019, 2020. And to be honest, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't waste that much time in those platforms. The pricing is just awful. You will always be beaten down by competitors that have a lower pricing cap than you. It's just the way it goes. Most people there are for a quick project with a low budget and all of that stuff. And I myself don't find most of the time very serious clients on those platforms. Let's say you have finally found a potential customer who wants to work with you, they have replied to your email or even have reached out to you on your social media. Now you will want to know how to actually charge them and what are the fees for the services that you offer. First of all, this will highly depend on what kind of project they want to work with you on, what are their requirements as well as your skill level. Now I myself find most of the time three main ways that people charge for realistic rendering projects. The first one would be having a set fee for the size of the building or the project. People that charge this way have X amount of dollars per one square meter or per one square feet that they charge for. I personally wouldn't ever recommend this because it is just not logical for me, but I get it that in some third world countries, even in my country, that's how most of the things work in the architecture industry. But let's say you're a beginner and you have no other choice and it is basically the only charging option that the client is offering you. I would start out with 10 to $15 per square meter, considering that you have the fundamentals right in your 3D rendering. Now, if you cannot charge that much, the reason being is probably because your clients don't find your work valuable enough and that way you actually have to invest more time and money onto your skills. But just remember that budget is never an issue when you actually have your skills intact. The other option is charging per hourly rate which makes a bit more sense than charging per size of the project. But that still isn't the ideal option. The reason why I don't think this is the ideal option because you will have money tied up to your time and this will not allow you to have multiple projects at once. It will keep you tied down to one or two clients or let's say three clients at most if you take your projects very seriously. This will take away time from you to actually invest into getting more clients and it's just not the best way to actually make business. But I do see a lot of people making a living this way. Don't get me wrong. You can actually get very good fees this way. For me, it wouldn't be the final destination in the rendering journey. Now, the final option that I would suggest is to charge for the value that the customer gets. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you won't have a set fee of prices because each of the client will perceive different values from your services. Sometimes your services will be more valuable to one client than another, and it will just make the whole pricing side of things be not at a set fee. The way you set this up is that you actually want to get your clients in a meeting first, ask questions about the projects, ask about how important the project is to them, and that way you understand how valuable the project is to your client and you can charge based on that. Now, I'm not saying that you should screw up the potential clients and get as much money as possible from them. I'm just saying that this is a smarter way to actually do business because first and foremost, you will be able to outsource your projects to people that can do them even better than you. You will be able to spend more time and effort into getting more clients, meaning that you will have even more income for the business that you're doing. Usually the best places to outsource the projects that you get to are third world countries, but believe me that this technique that I'm suggesting to you requires a lot more negotiation skills, business skills in general, and maybe a little bit more comfort in terms of what your financial fundamentals are because you will have to be able to afford losing some potential clients. Now, as a final note, realistic rendering can take years if not done with the correct structure. I have created a 14 day realistic rendering plan and I have helped thousands of people with it to go from not knowing how to open a rendering software to creating realistic renderings like this and if this sounds like something that you want to do, make sure to click the first link in the description.